All right, so now let's talk about some important trigonometric limits. So really there are two, but there are sort of three versions of the first one. So the first part says the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 1. So this is just a given. This is a fact. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x always equals 1. But it extends even further than that. So the limit as x approaches 0 of sine nx over nx also equals 1. So notice I have the same thing here and the same thing here. So provided these two things match, and we're talking about the sine function and the fact that x goes to 0, this limit has to equal 1. And this actually is a ratio where it doesn't matter if the numerator and the denominator happen to be flipped. So if I have the limit as x approaches 0 of nx over sine nx, so the same thing over the same thing, again, with the sine function, but now the numerator and the denominator are flipped, this also equals 1. So I almost like to write this as the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of heart over heart equals 1, right? Because it doesn't really matter at all what's here as long as it's the same thing over the same thing. And that's got to equal 1, no matter what. So this is kind of all one of the important trig limits. And then the second one says that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x equals 0. So just to sort of clarify, if we were to have used direct substitution on this, um, so we'd get sine 0 over 0, we'd get indeterminate. We'd get 0 over 0. And there's really no algebra to be done here, so that's why this is, this is just a given statement so far that this particular limit equals 1. And the same would happen here with direct substitution. I would get 0 over 0. So again, this is just given information um, because of how often it comes up. So each of these limits is important to memorize and then know how to apply. All right, so let's look at our first example. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 5x divided by x. All right, we almost have the property or the trig limit that we just looked at. So what we would need in order for this to equal 1 is that we would need the same thing here and the same thing here. And we're close, right? So they both share an x, but they differ by a factor of 5. So there's a little trick that we're going to implore here, and it's harder for some people than for others. So this is the same as the limit as x approaches 0. So let's just rewrite what we have. We have sine 5x over x. So let's go ahead and write what we need, right? So we need sine 5x over 5x. But if we're going to if we're going to multiply the denominator by 5, I also have to multiply the numerator by 5. Because it's like multiplying by 5 over 5, the same thing over the same thing, so it's like multiplying by 1. So we really haven't changed the problem here. So now this 5 that's in the front, on the top, in the numerator, well, my constant limit law says I can go ahead and take that 5 and pull it to the outside of the limit. So this is 5 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 5x over 5x. So one of the important trig limits is that this, because I now have matching terms, equals 1. And I have the constant in the front, so 5 times 1 equals 5. So it's just clever multiplication. I needed a 5 in the denominator, so I had to put 1 in the numerator. And then my constant law says I can go ahead and pull that out. And then once I'm left with sine of the something over that same thing, I can apply my special trig limit that says that that value is always 1, and then multiply the 1 by that constant 5. So let's try another example. All right, so in this next example, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent 2x over x. And you might be thinking, none of the important trig limits involve tangent. And you're right. But this now comes down to remembering how we can relate sine and cosine to the tangent function. So this limit is the same as the limit as x approaches 0. The tangent function is sine over cosine. So tangent 2x in the numerator is the same as sine 2x over cosine 2x. And we can't forget that that whole thing is over x. So all I've done so far is rewrite tangent 2x 
a sine 2x divided by cosine 2x and then rewrote the denominator of x. So now this is the limit as x approaches 0 so I have sine 2x divided by cosine 2x and the denominator this is really like x over 1 so when I have a fraction divided by a fraction it's like multiplying by the reciprocal so the reciprocal of x over 1 is 1 over x all right so I am going to again cleverly rewrite this because I'm I'm trying to apply my special trig limits which involve sine nx so in this case 2x so sine 2x over well I want a 2x right now I only have an x so I'm gonna put the x below sine 2x times 1 over cosine 2x now all I've done is switch the denominators right so there everything here is being multiplied divided so all I've done is switch the x and the cosine 2x I haven't rewritten the problem at all multiplication is commutative so I can switch them so now what I want to do though is well I want to split this up into two separate limits by my product law so I'm gonna get the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 2x over x times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine 2x so this left side looks almost like my important trig limit I would need a 2 in the denominator which means I would need a 2 in the numerator but since we know what we're gonna do is take the 2 and pull it to the front let's just put it in the front right now so I'm gonna have 2 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 2x divided by 2x so this limit right here equals 1 and then it's multiplied by this 2 on the outside so this left side is just 2 times 1 times now this limit this is not the other special trig limit but it also has no problem with just substituting 0 into the function so here I have this rational function 1 over cosine 2x it is continuous and I can go ahead and substitute in 0 so direct substitution would give me 1 over cosine of 2 times 0 so what I have is 2 times 1 over cosine of 0 is 1 so 2 times 1 gives me a final answer of 2 so now we're using a lot of building blocks here we're using some um, trig properties where tangent is sine over cosine we're using our special trig limit uh, sine nx over nx equals 1 and we're also using direct substitution and applying the fact that we know that cosine of 0 because 2 times 0 is 0 cosine of 0 is 1 so there's a lot of information here that goes into just this one example all right and in this next example we have the limit as x approaches 0 of x cosine x over sine 4x so let's go ahead and try to see what we can do to manipulate this and use our special trig identity so what I have is I have an x in the numerator I have a sine 4x in the denominator and I also have a cosine x in the numerator and I'm just gonna move that one off to the side so it's kinda like cosine x over 1 so remember that as long as I had the same thing and the same thing here it didn't matter that the sine is on the bottom so what I can do now is well I want a 4 in the numerator with the x so that it matches this 4x so I must also put a 4 in the denominator but again we can pull that to the front now here's the trick to this though the 4 is in the denominator so it's like 4 is in the denominator but remember that everything's being multiplied by 1 in the numerator as well so what the constant that I pull to the front is not just 4 it's 1 over 4 so this is going to become 1 over 4 the limit as x approaches 0 of 4x over sine 4x times and I will go ahead and split it up the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x so remember that we can break this up into two separate limits and then the 1 fourth is only corresponding to the portion that I multiplied the 4 in the numerator by so I also had to multiply 4 in the denominator so this is my special limit that equals 1 times 1 fourth times the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x so direct substitution cosine 0 is 1 so my final answer here is 1 fourth